Y'all may be seated. Welcome friends and family who have come together for this momentous day as we celebrate the marriage between Courtney and Pia Coyne, a.k.a. Boom. What a joy it is to be here this day. My name is Jeff Bender, and I have the privilege of calling these two friends, and it's my joy to help in celebrating this formal uniting of their lives together this day. The road that has brought Pia Corn and Courtney here today hasn't always been easy. It's been filled with challenges that they weren't necessarily prepared for at all times, but together they've taken on each one and have used those experiences to strengthen their love. I'm sure each of us have some great stories to share about these two. So today on this beautiful day, we celebrate that we have all come to know and understand about these two lovebirds as we witness the ritual of their marriage. At this time, I'd like to invite Tiffany, Peacorn's sister, forward for a reading. this moment. <laughs> we gather in the presence of God to give thanks for the gift of marriage, to witness the joining together of Pia Corn and Courtney, to surround them with our prayers and to ask God's blessing upon them so that they may be strengthened for their life together and nurtured in their love for God. God created us in God's own image and gave us marriage so that two people may help and comfort each other, living faithfully together in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow in sickness and in health throughout all their days. God gave us marriage for the full expression of the love between two people. In marriage, each person belongs to one another and with affection and tenderness, freely give themselves to each other. In marriage, we are called to a new way of life, created, ordered, and blessed by God. This way of life must not be entered into carelessly or from selfish motives, but responsibly and prayerfully. We rejoice that marriage is given by God, blessed by our Lord Jesus Christ and sustained by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, let marriage be held in honor by all. Let us all pray. Gracious God, you are always faithful in your love for us. Look mercifully upon Courtney and Pia Corn, who have come seeking your blessing. Let your Holy Spirit rest upon them so that with steadfast love they may honor the promises they make this day through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now will the families of this lovely couple please stand. To the families, do you give your blessing to Pia Corn and Courtney and promise to do everything in your power to uphold them in their marriage? If so, please say we do. All right, that's the first step, y'all. All right. And now would all those in attendance please stand. This is now your opportunity as family and friends to unite in witness and celebration of this union. Will all of you witnessing these vows do everything in your power to uphold Pia Corn and Courtney in their marriage? If so, please say we will. All right, you got it. There we go. Congregation may be seated. And this time I'd like for Pat to come forward for our scripture reading.
rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Now Peter Corn's dead, Roger. This special reading was chosen by Courtney and Pia Corn. It's called Love Isn't Always Perfect. Love isn't always perfect. It isn't a fairy tale or a storybook. And it doesn't always come easy. Love is overcoming obstacles. Facing challenges, fighting to be together, holding on, and never letting go. It's a short word, easy to spell, difficult to define, and it's impossible to live with. Love is work, but most of all, love is realizing that every hour, every minute, and every second was worth it. Pierre Corn and Courtney, you two have come a long way. <laughs> it's funny to think about, we often get to meet people in a particular place and time, and that's often only how we know them. We rarely get to learn of someone's entire story at our first encounter. The, but the first time I met Courtney and Pierre Corn, it was on the very first day of my work here as a pastor uh, back in 2017. It was also the first day of vacation Bible school. And so the natural chaos of having 50 or so children running around the church was the context in which we met. We met as pastor and VBS volunteers. They didn't know anything of my recent travels all the way from Virginia here to Oregon or the stress of the first day. And I didn't know anything about their relationship up until that point. And I certainly didn't know their stories, their experiences, their struggles, individually or as a couple. There we were in the middle of laughter and singing and scampering feet, our lives now joined together in that particular place and time. So flash forward nearly two years when Courtney called me up a few weeks back and asked if I would marry these two lovebirds here. And I was a bit surprised and admittedly not aware of their larger, wonderful story. One of the very first times we sat down for premarital counseling, I asked how they met. And you could see both of their eyes light up as they told me the story of their meeting in Thailand back in 2015, their team teaching and mentorship in the coming weeks and months, and their adventures and romantic outings, their challenges of trying to be together as a couple across an entire ocean, and they have the pictures and the documentation to prove it for all of us and the State Department. <laughs> As I have had the privilege of getting to know Pia Corn and Courtney more and more over these past few weeks, I have come to appreciate and admire each of them as individuals and their identity and love as a couple. I think about this as we heard from Paul's letter to the Corinthians earlier that Pat read. And we often hear these words, we know what's coming next. Love is patient, it's kind, it's not envious or boastful or arrogant. It doesn't rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in truth. It bears all things. It believes and hopes and endure all things. Love never ends. And if we are simply to take these words on their surface meaning, they really are nice, flowery words. We hear them and say, isn't that lovely? <laughs> But if we're able to spend a little bit more time with these words this morning, if we're able to sit down with them and to learn more of their story, much like I had the opportunity to do so with the two of you, then we open ourselves to learning so much more and appreciating so much more of what is already right in front of us. Paul is not simply writing a greeting card to the people of Corinth on this day. He's writing about his understanding of what it means to put Christian love in action to a community that was struggling to do so. And this is the love that is holy, godly love. 
It moves beyond the surface of the world around us, deep into our very souls. He uses the word agape. This holy, godly love is able to survive hardship and conflict and perhaps whatever the world may want to throw at it. And this is the approach to love and marriage that is different than any other type of love. The people of Paul's time had three different types of love. They had romantic, friendly, and holy love. And while Paul understood that romantic and friendly love had their place, it was holy love that would last through the trials of life. Pia Corn and Courtney embraced this agape love as a couple. In times when friendliness may not be on the top of your mind with one another, you are called to holy love. When you don't feel as romantic as you did when you first started dating, embrace this godly love. When times will certainly be challenging again and again, we are called to love unconditionally. Today we celebrate this reading in the presence of each other and in the presence of our Creator. We are reminded of this unending love time and time again in the person of Christ Jesus, who time and time again calls us back to God's love for us as God's children. Courtney and Pia Korn, you have amazing stories to tell. You have a memory lane to celebrate. And you also have a lifetime of building upon your relationship with the godly love that we are all called to take part in. For you both, in particular, as one married couple. So may your marriage be blessed with joy and laughter and happiness. And most importantly, a godly love that knows no end. Now, at this time, we are going to be exchanging the vows, and Pia Corn and Courtney have pledged to do so on their own. So you're going to hold on to that for a moment. And are these yours here? Okay. So Pia Corn, understanding that God has created, ordered, and blessed the covenant of marriage, do you affirm your desire and intention to enter into this covenant? If so, say, I do. And Courtney, understanding that God has created, ordered, and blessed the covenant of marriage, do you affirm your desire and intention to enter this covenant? If so, say, I do. Peter Corn and Courtney have wrote, written their own vows, and so at this time, they're going to share them with each other. And Courtney, I invite you first. says you Courtney Bird, from the moment our soul met, you have surprised and challenged me the way no other human being ever has. I'm falling in love with you again and again, and I still can't believe that today I get to marry you that tomorrow will always be perfect. But I can't promise you my everlasting devotion, my loyalty, my respect, and my unconditional love. I promise to stand side by side through ups and downs, 
I will always do my best to be the greatest support. And may you always be my love. I love that our families and friends have embraced our love since the beginning. And I promise to fully mirror that love. <laughs> Thank you for being you and doing us. Thank you for holding my hand through our journey with your best love and support. Party Bird, I love you so much. You are my light, and you have shown me more love than I've ever known. Popcorn and hot. Not much. So, Courtney and Peacorn, what do you bring as a sign of your promise? By your blessing, O oh God, may these rings be to Peacorn and Courtney symbols of unending love and faithfulness, reminding them of the covenant they have made this day through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, Courtney, please take Peacorn's left hand and repeat these words and grab the ring. This ring I give you as a sign of our constant faith and abiding love in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And if you're going, please take Courtney's left hand and repeat these words. This ring I give you as a sign of our constant faith and abiding love in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And at this time, I invite the mothers and their daughters to stand together by the candles. Love is a force more formidable than any other. It cannot be seen or measured, yet it is powerful enough to transform us in a moment and offer us more joy than any material possession ever could. But although this love joins you together as one, remember the gift of your individuality today. Cherish and affirm your differences as you love each other. Be supportive of your strengths and tender towards your weaknesses. Be comforted by each other's presence and secure in each other's absence. Will the mothers please light the individual candles? The two outside candles have been lit to represent both of your lives at this moment, Courtney and Peacorn. They are two distinct lights, each capable of going their separate ways. As you join now in marriage, there is a merging of these two lights into one light. This is what the Lord meant when he said, Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. From now on, your thoughts shall be for each other rather than your own individual selves. Your plans shall be mutual. Your joys and sorrows shall be shared alike. As each candle is together used to light the center, is used to light the center one, you'll extinguish your own candles, thus letting the center candle represent the union of your lives into one flesh. As this one light cannot be divided, neither shall your lives be div divided, but a united testimony in a Christian home. May the radiance of this one light be a testimony of your unity in the Lord Jesus Christ. And at this time, Will the mothers hand the individual candles to the couple to light the unity candle together?
and mothers, you may take your seats, and Pia Corn and Courtney may stand before us once again. Let us pray. Without your grace, no promise is sure. Strengthen Courtney and Peter Quinn with all humility, gentleness, patience, and love, so that they may fulfill the vows they have made. Keep them faithful to each other and to you. Fill them with such love and joy that they may build a home of peace and welcome. Guide them by your word to serve you all their days. Help us all, O oh God, to do your will in each of our homes and lives. Most loving creator, by us witnessing this ceremony, enrich us all with your grace so that, supporting one another, we may serve those in need and hasten the coming of peace, love, and justice on earth. We pray to you with the words Jesus taught us, together saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Before God and in the presence of this body, Peacorn and Courtney have made their solemn vows to each other. They have confirmed their promises by the joining of hands and by the giving of their rings. Therefore, I proclaim that they are now married. <laughs> Blessed be the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Those whom God has joined together, let no one separate. You may share your first kiss of many as a married couple. And now we ask a charge and a blessing. The grace of Christ attend you. The love of God surround you. The Holy Spirit keep you that you may live in faith, abound in hope, and grow in love both now and forever. Amen. And now, friends, I have the pleasure of introducing to you all for the very first time, Courtney and Pia Corn Bird. Yeah. <laughs> 